Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you irons! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Thanks for joining us. Please don't forget to like, comment on and share the stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Make sure you hit the bell icon for alerts and new content. All these actions you can take are free of charge to you. They help grow the channel and they take only a couple of seconds of your time. What's not to like? We thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter. And we are here to discuss... The opening day of the Premier League season, 2024-25, Charlie. Match day one is in the history books. Only another 37 to go. We played Aston Villa at London Stadium. Now, unfortunately, I didn't make it, Charlie, as you're fully aware. I just thought I'd get that out there for the dear viewer that might be looking and observing that I'm not going to fill in with too much in the way of uh, informed content because I haven't seen any of it quite frankly um, but you did you was there and uh, so I'm hoping you're going to be able to fill us all in with, with what you witnessed so the first question I think I really need to ask is that before even the teams were announced what did you observe of the atmosphere around the stadium or, you know in the sort of the, the places you frequented pre-kickoff yeah, well, I didn't. I didn't get too much of a build up because we was. I was out with work and whatever pre game. But I was uh, so I got there around must have been four o'clock something like that. So I was there for an hour and a half in and around Stratford. It was busy. It was lively. Um, I was in the stadium about five ten past five. Um, so a good twenty minutes before before kick off, and yeah, it was lively. It was probably. Aside from the big European games that we had at the stadium last couple of years, I think it was probably one of the loudest and up for it games I've heard for a, you know, a good while. So I, I don't think there's anything that can be said for the fans weren't up for it. Obviously, that changed after four minutes and how many seconds. But before before kickoff, it was um, was certainly up for it. Yeah. So um, I, as I say, I was I was elsewhere today. Um, and, and it came. It, the, the news obviously came through to you. I had it on my phone. It pinged up. Um, not a great start. I mean, tell you what. Let's just back the truck up. Let's before we get into that. Let's obviously the I've got there the the starting elevens now. There was obviously a lot of talk in, in the build-up to the game about is this player going to play? Is that player going to play? We've done a lot of good business so far in the transfer window. Um. Wan Bissaka, a lot of people felt it was going to be too early for him, so it proved. Um, however, also missing was uh, Tadebo, was Somerville, was Fulcrug, all on the bench, and a lot of to a lot of people's surprise and some people's dismay was included a certain Thomas Socek. Um, what did you make of the starting lineup? Yeah, well, I think hand on heart, and I think this is goes for me and without wanting to speak for everyone else, I think hand on heart, most people would probably have guessed this was going to be the lineup aside from Thomas Sujic. I think we was all aware that it was too early for wan too early for Tadebo. Each have probably had two or three days training with the team um, since they signed. I don't think anyone was expecting Fulcrook to come in over Antonio. Um, again, it was... Uh, there's been a lot of, and I'll, I'll put myself in this bracket, a lot of people asking for sort of Paqueta next to Rodriguez and then Kudas in the 10. I don't think anyone particularly ever believed that was going to happen, certainly against Villa. Um, so I think this was very predictable. I guess the only unpredictable thing about it and a bit of a surprise was that it was um, 
Thomas Suchek over James Will Prowse. So when I saw, when I saw that come through, I was a bit confused. Um, although having said that, obviously I watched the uh, Hammers Chat preview earlier in the week as well, and Geo Great Spa and Geo predicted that it would be Suchek. Um, I, I, I don't really get why. I still don't really get why it was Suchek over James Will Prowse. You think Lopetegui likes to keep the ball, likes to get balls into the box. I just think. James Wall Prowse would have been the choice, but he obviously went Zucek. That was my concern. Well, moving on to thoughts about when I saw the lineup. Unexpected, but I was certainly had concerns. I think Zucek was a concern, Sufal was a concern, and Mavra Paris was a concern. Other than that, it's pretty other than that, I was pretty happy. What about the uh, the villa lineup? When you saw the Villa lineup as as is on the screen there, what were you, what were your thoughts over that? Again, I thought it was pretty predictable. I didn't really know what, how many of their new signings they was bringing in. Obviously, they brought an Anna in. Didn't really have much choice there, given that they'd lost um, Douglas Louise. I kind of expected uh, Matson to play, but then then again, I guess it's a similar situation to ourselves just bedding the new players in a little bit before they start so yeah pretty again pretty predictable lineup good lineup of course um some really good players in there i was hoping that potentially watkins not having a minute of pre-season would help us and i don't think it particularly i don't think it didn't um i think he was pretty quiet but yeah predictable but again i thought it was going to be a tough test and Obviously, so it proved to be, but I don't look at the I don't look at the elevens even there when I think of the people we are missing and of the key personnel we're missing. Um, I don't think there's a lot in it between the two elevens. If I'm totally honest. So obviously, um, as as we referenced, the goal was scored after about four minutes from Amadou Onana, and I appreciate that. There wouldn't have been much time before that for what I'm about, how I'm about to ask you. But up to the point that Villa took the lead, what were your initial impressions of how we we started out as the, in the first Premier League outing under the new manager? Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's you know, it's only four minutes, but I think it's definitely a fair question because I think we played well. I think we was doing all right. Um, as you say, it's only four minutes, but we was get, we was keen to get on the ball. We was reluctant to lump it long we did do it a few times um but it was always sort of a last result rather than a first result which i think it became last season i smiled to the gods when we didn't take the kick off pass it back and smash it long mm-hmm. we took the kick off passed it back passed it back to the center back and kept the ball a little bit so thank the lord that stupid kick off that never worked once in uh mr moise's time will hopefully never be seen again. Um, but I thought it was playing well. I was getting on the ball. I was keen to pass it around. We had a couple of little attacks. Nothing nothing sort of threatening. Um, but yeah, as you say, it didn't last particularly long. I don't know if you've seen the goal. Have you not seen the goals at all? I don't think I've seen you? anything. I've literally walked in from, um, from the, the Oval where we was watching the Eliminator of the 100, which went to a Super 5. Um, so the cricketing equivalent of a penalty shootout. So it went on a little bit longer than expected. Um, and I've literally just walked through the door, mate, to do this recording with you. I so I'm not these thing. Uh, traditional English sports with these American sounding <laughs> phrases, super five, super over. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it was a shame because I think a bit, a bit of the passing or the passing out from the back possibly cost us on the first goal. It was a corner. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head whose pass out was. I feel like it was Sufal, but that may just be me uh, assuming it was Sufal because he can't pass the ball. Um, so don't quote me on that. But yeah, it was a needless bit of passing at the back, smashed into one of our own players, went out for a goal, uh, went out for a corner kick, and uh, the rest was history. So we're one nil down, and. Again, between then and the 37th minute when, obviously, we were awarded a penalty. Um, again, that phase of, of the of the match, do you think that we um, 
what were your observations in terms of how we approached being then one nil down after you know so so early in the into the match into the, the tenure of the new manager? Do you think we coped? Do you think we took a little bit of time to to sort of like shake that out of our system? What were your observations? Yeah, we we was okay on the ball. We had a few chances, but there's there's I'm not going to pretend we was on top during that period. I think for that period, pretty much between when we conceded and when we got scored the penalty, I think Villa were on top. Possibly should have been two 0 up. Um, had a couple of good chances during that time, so potentially lucky to not be two 0 down or not be more than one 0 down. But again, throughout the game, I think there was a positive. We'll probably get onto a bit a bit of a summary at the end, but. There was positive signs. We was getting on the ball. We was trying to make things happen. Players are going to need time to gel. Um, there's a couple of inhibit- inhibitors, if I can get the word out of my mouth, in that team that caused a lot of our attacks to break down. Um, you won't. You'll probably be able to guess them having not even seen the game. If I said, I've, yeah, if I said do. There was two inhibitors mainly going forward. Yeah. Take a guess at them. You're probably going to go and have a guess. Uh, I'm going to say one was Mikhail Antonio. Correct. Uh, and would I be right in saying possibly the other one is the aforementioned Thomas Suchek? Correct. Ah, what a surprise. S- surprising, eh? Um, yeah. Who'd have thought, yeah, thought it? So, Antonio, I think he came into his own a little bit in the second half. But the first half, I thought it was absolutely shocking. And we kind of skipped over the goal a little bit that they scored. The colder from whoever took it, I can't remember. But Anana was Antonio's man and he just let him go. It's one of the worst pieces to defend in at corner I can remember for a long time. He just let him go, never caught up with him. Why we've got Antonio is probably not six foot up against six foot five Anana or whatever he is. It's probably a question for a start, but um, it's just lazy. It's just lazy and really, really poor defending from Antonio. That's obviously not what he's on the pitch for. What he's on the pitch for is going forward. He looked good at times with bringing the ball down, trapping it, doing all the hard work. Some really, really, really sloppy passing. Um, there was one, one break, I don't know whether it was before or after the penalty that we scored, but there was one breakaway. It was basically two on two. Antonio and Bowen, I believe, if I remember correctly. And it was just a simple, simple pass. Um, totally messed it up. Smashed it miles in front of him. Keeper come and got it. Yeah, so it was... Um, our attacks were breaking down at times and largely... It sounds like I'm targeting these two, but largely it was focused <laughs> around Thomas Suchek and... Mikhail Antonio. The shoot so check did put us a penalty. Okay. So so talk to me about the, the penalty incident. Um again, was it was there any dispute debate from your point of view? Did it or was it a stone waller? No, it's def- certainly not a stone waller. I think I'd be if I was a villa fan, I'd be frustrated. I, I mean I, we won they won two one, so they won't really care now, but no. Had they lost that game or had they not picked up the win in that game, I think they'd be probably rightly a few minutes that decision. Um, I thought it was soft at the time. I didn't think he was going to give it. I was when he did give it. I, was, I didn't particularly think it was going to get over overturned because it's kind of one of them ones that very soft but won't get to overturned either way. Whatever the referee's decision is, having looked at it back, I'm surprised it didn't get overturned. There's a bit of a tangle of legs. I believe it's Matty Cash that makes the tackle. But he gets a foot on the ball first. He, well, he gets a foot might be overstating it. He gets a toenail on the ball before they come together. So yeah, I'm I'm not sure about I'm not sure about this. I think there's a sort of directive from the PG PGMOL this season to stick with referees' decisions on the field more. Mm. Sounds good in practice or sounds good in principle. In practice, if you're going to get them wrong, I think maybe it needs to be looked at because like, it worked in our favour. I'm not going to complain, but if I was a Villa fan, I'd be um, 
yeah, a bit aggrieved at it. So um, it was obviously Lucas Pacatar that stepped up to take the penalty. Um, Brazil versus Argentina. Um, I mean, Emmy Martinez is is one of the, the best goalkeepers in the world, in my opinion. And he's also happens to be a very proficient stopper of penalties. You know, he was a big part of Argentina winning the World Cup on a penalty shootout, let's not forget. Um, mm. He puts it past Emmy Martinez, though, gets gets the equaliser. Um, and then, obviously, we've, we've got to then reset, refocus. We've got the goal. We've got the equaliser. We've got, at that point, another eight minutes left of the half. How how did we then approach that the remainder of that half? Did you did you think we were going for it, or do you think that it was for the mm. remainder of that half? It was a little bit of a okay, let's let's try and get in. Let's not do anything stupid. Let's try and get in a, a sort of like even score. Yeah, well, there was, there was I believe not talking about. It, I think it was four minutes added on, so it turned out to be about twelve minutes between the goal and the half time. For ten of them, I think we was we was doing well. We was attacking, we was going for it. We looked like we was going to score at one point and potentially go in more than level. Um, there was a bit of a injury and a delay at the end of the half, and it just sort of petered out in the last two or three minutes. And I think Ariola had the ball at once at one point and just stood on it for a little while. So I think both teams were happy to go in at one one. But again, positive signs throughout. I think there was it was getting on the ball making stuff happen to a point, but end product, a little bit of breaking down in key areas. Um, but it, I, we went into half time and I was, I was fairly pleased. I was obviously pleased it was one, one, but more than that, I think it was a fairly decent start given all the context. And I think, I mean, I've got two extremely negative people either side of me when I'm sitting in that ground at home games. <laughs> so it can be quite easy to. I heard the word shit a countless number of times. Oh dear. Um, today, but I, th I think, given the context, and the context being that Bowen's played half hour in a friendly that no one saw in pre season, Paquette has played a game, They've, they're all coming back. We've got eight new signings in the squad, two of which are starting. See, I don't want to see Fodrenham starting, but that's uh, that's beside the point. Um, so I think there's I think there's a lot of context there. It's a new manager, totally new style. I was I was pleased enough going into half time, and I think there was I think there was decent signs. So overall, you you was quite pleased with the first half, the first forty five of the the new head coach's era. Um, we then move into the the second half now. Uh, one thing that I observed from from looking at the um, the match reports is something that was very rarely done in in the David Moyes era, and unless I'm I'm getting things wrong, um, the new manager actually used five substitutes, Charlie. Which I I was like, wow, we haven't seen this for a while. That's revolutionary. I, did. I bet you yes. couldn't believe what was going on. No, well. <laughs> I hate to complain because it's a much better. <laughs> Actually, I don't hate to complain. But I'm quite good at it, but it's obviously much better than last couple of seasons. What we've seen, we're using the squad. We used the five subs. Three of them came on, but about sixty-five minutes, I believe, and then a couple of others. Or maybe this is the other way around. It was two and three, but I think we needed a couple at half time. I think if we had had a couple at half time, and I know that's quite bold in the first game of the season, but Antonio was playing really poor. Soufal was getting, we haven't really spoke about Soufal before. Soufal was getting skinned. Mm. Very surprised he lasted the whole 90 minutes. I've heard that how true it is, I don't know, but that Wan Bissaka got a knock in the week, so perhaps wasn't 100%, didn't come on, which perhaps indicates that maybe he wasn't ready. To, well, he did get a knock and he wasn't ready to feature. Um, and Sujek, I can understand Sujek staying on, given the fact he was a nuisance at times and did win as a penalty, however soft it was. Um, but I, I wanted to see 
I wanted to see Antonio come off at half time. It obviously didn't happen. Pleased to see a couple, couple of subs, two or three subs, mm. 65 minutes. Again, I think they could have been a little bit sooner. Um, and yeah, the last couple of subs, again, were good that they were used, but probably could have been used a little bit sooner. But good signs, squad rotation, using using the full allocation of spaces. Um, good to see. Long may continue. It would be remiss of me to gloss over one specific substitution. And it unfortunately wasn't one that we made. It was one that was made by Unai Emery on the 62nd minute. He made a, du- made a double substitution on the 62nd minute. But I'm talking in reference to a gentleman that's been linked with us quite heavily over this transfer window. And I'm, I said it on the preview. I'm not totally convinced that he won't be a West Ham player before the window shuts. John Duran um, came on for Ollie Watkins and obviously played played quite a key part in the outcome of the match, Charlie. I mean, when he stepped onto the pitch, um, and I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't actually think that he would feature. And it was only when I spoke to Nick from Claret and Booze a couple of days ago and he sort of painted this picture of, yeah, but you know what's going to happen, don't you, Gatesy? He's going to come on and he's going to have a point to prove. And I sat there and I thought, wow, yeah, he he really does, doesn't he, actually? Because we've kind of messed him about. He's sort of like been left in no man's land. If he comes on, he's going to be a, a dangerous, dangerous customer that we've got to deal with. Um, I'll... I'll, I'll that then sort of like made me quite concerned. And of course, when I saw he was on the bench, I thought, ooh, ooh, because I was convinced he was not going to pull on a, a shirt for Aston Villa again at all. Um, and then I saw him on the, on the bench, obviously, when the teams were announced. And I thought, uh-oh, uh, he comes on the 62nd minute. Were you were you apprehensive at that point? Did you sort of like think, oh, this here we go. This would be so West Ham, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, apprehensive is uh, understating it. I think the lot of us that on our row where we are in up in the gods all looked at each other and went, oh, we know what's coming here. We know what's happening. Uh, mm-hmm. We audibly said it. A lot of us said it. Um, yeah, I just, it's just so West Ham. It's anything more West Ham than spend a whole summer getting linked with a striker for 40 million. Barely miss out on him by about two or three minutes from the reports. Um, does the cross hammers on the live stream, pisses all the Villa fans off. First game of the season, comes off the bench, scores a winner, and looks really good doing it. Um, God, he's a bastard. He's an absolute arsehole, but if we got him, I'd, uh, I'd be fine with that. Yeah, um, like Craig Bellamy the... back in the day. Yeah, he was down on the floor, feigning injury for a little while when there was, must have been 2-1 up at the time, um, trying to get the referee to stop play and uh, bastard, but I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind him being our bastard. And I am, it's it's too early to say this and I'm fully caveating this and admitting this too early to say this, but I did just see about half hour of Fulcrook after half hour of Fulcrook last week. And half hour of John Duran today. There's only one half hour there that impressed me, and that was John Duran. Um, so I hope Fulker comes good. And look, I'm not saying he won't. It's far too early to judge it, but mm. yeah, um, if six months down the line, Fulker could have a Haller and uh, Skamaka and John Duran's banging him in, it's going to be it's going to be frustrating. <laughs> going to be frustrating but yeah knew it was coming or well, predicted it was coming and so it did well it came 11 minutes before full time so talk talk me through the goal charlie if you would it's a great goal it was to be fair to villa i don't think generally throughout the game i don't think they was massively on top i think there was points where they was on top there's points where we was on top hmm. i haven't looked at the stats, stats since about half top well since half time but I would predict that they pretty they're pretty even. I'd say the shots yeah. were pretty similar. Possession was pretty similar. I don't think 
there was necessary. I mean, both teams could and should have probably scored more. Um, I don't think there was a lot in it generally, mm. but yeah, yeah. What was I can't even remember the question at that point. Um, talk to me about John Duran's goal. John, yes, yeah, the the goal. But yeah, that's what I was saying. So I don't think there was a lot in it, but there was one standout move in the game, and it was that move, and it was pass, pass, pass down the left, their left hand side, our right hand side. Um, yeah, it was probably five or six really quick, fast, incisive passes. Must have been Matson by this point, or whoever was on the left wing. I can't remember who got got down the left wing. Their left wing got across in, pulled it back, and it was a fairly simple finish for Duran. To be fair to him, it, nice finish. If you're being super critical on Ariola, it has gone through his legs, um, but he's diving to save it. Is hit a pace. I'm not going to criticise him too much for that going through his legs, but nice finish. Lovely build up to the goal. Um, yeah, that was that was the one piece of really top quality football in the game because it was quite a scrappy game. Um, but yeah, great goal. I've got the assist down here, Charlie, coming from Jacob Ramsey. Does that sound about right? Yeah, to you? yeah, he's probably on by that point, and then over on that side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, there was a couple more substitutions that took place. Um, with five minutes to go till full time, one was Danny Ings for Guido Rodriguez, which, yeah, that I'm like, mm, okay, whatever. I can I can see what he's doing. Obviously, he's sacrificing a defensive mid at that point for a striker, but Danny he went Ings, up top. Danny Ings. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, I get it too much, but he went yeah. too up top to try and get an equaliser. But what what happened when he brought um, Jean Claire Todibo on and he brought off? Vladimir Kufal, what did Mavropanos go to right back at that point, or did he change formation? What 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 happened when that substitution took place? Yeah, so exactly what you said. Mavropanos went to right back. Okay. It was it wasn't quite as simple as that, I guess. It's it was the formation where it can switch easily between a four and five. So you had Mavropanos to Debo and Kilman mm-hmm. when it was a three. And then when it was back four, it would have been Ma- it was Mavropanos on the right, uh, Kilman, Steve in the centre, and then Emerson left. Okay. So yeah, but Ma- essentially Mavropanos went to the right. What did you think of Tadebo? Did he? I know it's only five minutes you're judging him on, but but did it look like mm, yeah, okay, this this player's probably going to have to be in contention for the game against Palace in a week's time or? Um, it's difficult. It was difficult. It was only five, six minutes, seven, or maybe ten minutes with the added time. It didn't really touch the ball that much. He probably had four or five touches. Yeah. A couple of times, the crowd got a little bit frustrated with him. Um, it was like when we was really trying to chase an equaliser and we needed a quick forward pass, whether that was a David Moore style long ball or a whatever it was, get it forward. And he went backwards or he went sideways. So there was a couple of times he got a bit a few groans from the crowd. Um, to be honest, he wasn't really tested defensively. I think, to be fair to Mavropanos, he had a shaky 10 minutes in the first half, 10, 15 minutes. Hmm. And I was thinking, oh no, not again. Um, but I think he got a lot better as the game went on. I didn't quite have him as man a match contender, but I've watched... Gio's review, and he did say he was sort of second round of match to Caduce. I thought Kilman was the best centre back out of the two of them, but both had a good game despite us losing and conceding two goals. Um, I don't know. I th- I think I want him to start, but based on the performance today, you could probably understand if it stayed at Kilman and Mavropanos for Crystal Palace. Um, as long as we chose the right back, providing wan fit. That'd be quite a debut for wan being at Sellers Park, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Hadn't, hadn't put two and two together there, but yeah, that would be quite a return. Mm. This must have oh. been back there a few times, though. 
Yeah, yeah, but obviously first time since moving back to London. Um, so overall, Charlie, what were your thoughts? On, oh, it finishes obviously two one at the end. Um, I probably I should should before I go to this should reference because there was a chance in the dying embers of the game, um, which I have seen, and I I'm not a big one for the XG stat. You may be. Um, but they've I've seen this thing doing the rounds on social media saying that Thomas Socek's chance right at the end was a 0 0.93 XG, which I believe means that it is pretty much a, a, a sitter. Yeah, um, well, we had two two chances at it, so I don't know which one of them was a 0 0.93 and which one was probably a 0 0.9 two or whatever that they was both i mean one was a semi over a kick so that maybe that was a 0 0.7 or whatever I don't know. i'm not into the detail but then yeah the, some of it were actually putting across that it looked at the stadium looked to me like it sort of overheat it having seen it back i think he intends it to overheat it and then it goes to caduce on the other side he was on the right by this point because Bowen and Paquette had gone off um, so Kadoosh puts it, chips it back in into the middle, and the one man you want on the top of the, the one thing you do want him on the end of a header, lit, lofted up header, two yards out would probably be generous. It's probably not even that. It just totally misheaders it. I just, I didn't look so bad in the stadium because he headers it, and then. It, Basically comes off one of the Aston Villa defenders, and it kind of made you look, made you made it look like it'd been saved off the line, or headed off the line by one of the defenders. Mm. It was going wide. It was going wide. He was based. Thomas Suchet was basically on the back post. It's been chipped up to him, and it was going wide at the front post where Caduceus was, um, until the Aston Villa defender got in the way of it. It then came back out to shoot Suchek, who tried to do some sort of volley, bicycle kick, semi, whatever, scissor kick thing. Not a difficult one. It's not like Wayne Rooney bicycle kick. It was a pretty basic one as far as they go. Um, and then he just blasts it over the bar. No one in front of him. So, yeah, I mean, that the X, I'm not going to be going for XG either, to be honest. But, Me either. The two chances together must have been an XG of 1.5 or whatever it is. I don't, I don't know. It was just, it was unbelievable that he's missed it. I don't know how he's missed it. And that's where I kind of, that's what I kind of mean in terms of we should have scored more. We had that chance. We had a couple of other little ones. Um, yeah. I just, still baffled about how he missed it. Baffled. Well, we obviously get to the, the end of the match, losing the game 2-1. Um, specifically on the second half, what were your thoughts on the performances in the second 45? I think we played point? better. Yeah, I think we played better in the second 45. I thought, as I said, Mavropanos got better as the game went on. Antonio got better as the game went on until he was blown out of his arsehole, which was probably about 55 minutes. Um Obviously came off on the 67th, 60, something like that. Probably needed to come off before that. Um, yeah, I thought we was playing well. I thought we was, well, might be overstating it. That might get people, get a few people in the comments saying, I can't believe <laughs> we played brilliant. You thought we played brilliantly. It's not what I'm saying. But given all the context and the grand scheme of things and the fact we was against a very good Aston Villa team mm. who qualified for the Champions League this last year, They'd had one change in their team over the, oh, between the end of the last season and this game. Um, in Anana coming in, who obviously scored instead of Douglas Louise. Personally, I think that's an upgrade. So I think Villa have done great business there. Um, so this is a team that knows exactly what they're doing. They've been doing it. It's, it's delivered for them. It's delivered them Champions League football. They've not started the in the Champions League yet so they haven't got that content content with I think all being all things being considered it's disappointing to lose and I think we had chances to not lose 
I'm not convinced we had chances to win, but I think we had a chance to not lose that game. Um, but positive signs. Right? It was a total, I've seen some. I could get on a rant here, but I've seen some absolute nonsense on Twitter saying it was exactly the same as David Moyers, and people and the two guys next to me were saying similar sort of. Oh, it's basically the same as last year. It was it was nothing like last year's. There was not not one point in that game was there any sort of eleven men behind the ball, low block, low block for a continuous three, four, five minutes. Well, for starters, we had fifty two percent possession, Charlie. Possession, we made lots of subs, we were trying to get the ball. Like there was there's been a big change over the summer with the manager, with the style of play. It's not all going to be perfect in the first game of the season, especially not when we've had the Euros, Copper America. Probably the majority of our team have not had a preseason longer than two or three weeks with the new manager. It's it's gonna take time and I think Given all that context, we played okay. Nothing spectacular, nothing get you off your seat and be like, we're going to win the league. But enough to enough to see that there's something brewing and that we get a few few games in, we start getting wan in, we get to Debo in, we get Suchek out, we get Antonio out, more to, more to the point, rather than who comes in, but... We get Alvarez back. I think Alvarez was a massive miss today, actually. Hmm. Um, potentially, probably more than I thought it was going to be. I think I thought Rodriguez was pretty good against Celta Vigo. Um, I thought he was just going to dip, basically cover exactly what Alvarez does. He's very, very slow. He's, he makes Suchek look fast. Um, Oops. I th- he's a lot better player. He's good on the ball. He's got a, he's got a good passing him, but he's quite surprisingly slow. I found it, I thought today um, there was a couple of times where he just got absolutely outpaced by Villa midfielders um, and strikers. So a little bit of a concern. I think we, as I say, I think we really missed Alvarez today. I can't get him back soon enough. Hopefully, it sounds like he's doing a bit of light training at the moment. So. I don't know, probably after that first international break would be realistic. Um, but yeah, if we can get him back ASAP, I think we'll look a lot more solid. Um, but positive signs despite the loss. Good. Who are the star players for each team? Uh, it's I think our, our one's easy. Our one's easy. I think Caduce was our man of the match. Um, certainly my man of the match for West Ham. I'm I'm worried I'm going to start sounding like a broken record and a dog with a bit of a dog with a bone this season if I keep seeing Caduce on that left hand side. It did it, it. He did get better the match and he was the best performer. But I, I can't help but feel he's wasted on that left hand side. He's so desperate to come in, get a shot off. He tried today a couple of times from the left hand side. And he's just got stupidly difficult angles on his left foot or a shot on his right foot that he's clearly not that comfortable with. Um, yeah, I, I worry that we have got two top class right wingers and we need to find a way to get them both in the team in positions that work for them. And I'm not convinced long term left wing is a good option for Gadoos. Um Caduce is certainly our man of the match. Villa, I'm just trying to remind myself of their uh, starting eleven or of their team, to be honest. I don't think they had any standout players. Anana was good, obviously scored the goal. I'd probably give it to Anana. Um, without, <laughs> I mean, the player of the match kind of explains my point on BBC's uh, player of the match. They've actually got John Duran as Esther Villa's man of the match who played <laughs> 30 minutes. So, yeah, I think that sort of shows that they didn't really have any standout performers. Um, it was just a solid team performance. I don't think I'd give it to Duran just because it's a bit of a shot in the heart. Mm. Um, the Premier League website gave it to Onana. Yeah, I think it's between the two. I think two goal scorers, obviously... 
Anana, I think, is going to be a great signing for Villa. I think he's going to slot in there perfectly and do a bit more than Douglas can re- Louise can do. Potentially not stop scoring a corner's part, but that's about it. Um, but Duran did look very lively when he came on, and that, that worries me that they might not let him go. If they can, and I've seen a quote from Emery after the final whistle when he talks about wanting to keep Duran around and it's got fantastic potential. Could just be puff pieces, could just be words to keep him happy or try and sell him on to someone. But I, I do worry that they might actually want to keep him around now because I, I was quite hopeful we was going to get him on a loan with an obligation to buy. Oh. That confidence of that move has, has been dented by that performance as he's come on. I think even before today, he had a fantastic goal per minute output in the Premier League just despite his limited minutes. So he's obviously added to that today. Um, and look dangerous. Look dangerous. So yeah, I'd, I'd give it to an honor, but between the two of them, there's not much in it. Of the players that were making their debut in Claret and Blue, so obviously we're talking Fulcrum, we're talking Somerville, we're talking Rodriguez, etc. Who who was your who was the ones that you were sort of quite pleased with? Who are the ones that you think mm, need to see them a couple more times? So I think to go to go through them quickly, Max Kilmer I was really impressed with actually. Um and I've been a little bit worried over what I'd seen pre-season with him. Hmm. And he was with Mar- Mavropanos, so it wasn't as if he had a new partner today. But I thought we looked really good in defence today. Saved us a couple of times. So keep that up. And 40 million might look like, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as a bargain, but a good uh, a good purchase. So no, please with Kilman. Somerville, when he come on, didn't get loads of the ball, but put in a good cross. Um, to set up Suchek's, well, to set up the setup to Suchek's open goal miss. Looked bright, looked tricky. I'd like to see him give him more time, um, potentially against Palace, and if not that, then against Bournemouth in the Cup. I'd like to see him start. Um, but yeah, I think I think he's going to be a good player. Um, just need to see a bit more. So you had Rodriguez, which is sort of covered and said, Looks good on the ball. Concerns me that he's a bit slow. Um, see if he gets up to the pace of the Premier League. Similarly, Fulcrug doesn't look like he's up to the pace of the Premier League just yet. And that's mm. limited minutes. But there was a couple of times where he had the ball and he just took far too much time to do anything. Turn or pass and got caught out and got tackled. Um not a massive issue. He's only well, he's played 15 minutes of Premier League football or whatever he's been. So I'm um, hopefully he can get up to speed pretty quickly. But yeah, not. Well, I mean, BBC have scored him at 4.76. So clearly didn't have great impact when he came on. Um, yeah, I'd be lying if there wasn't a little bit of me that's thinking I'm um, getting a little bit worried about this transfer. But fingers crossed, he'll come good. Today, as I said, barely touched the ball um, when he came on. So I think that was everyone, unless I've missed anyone. Somerville? Somerville touched on. Sorry. Somerville just spoke yeah. about with Tricky and, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so, so obviously, you know, the first game of the season, I guess it's, it's going to be too early to really sort of judge them. Um, I think probably in about... I, I've turned around and said I, I'm going to sort of really judge them and the coach um, once six games have gone past, and then I can really sort of look and go, okay, well, this is this is what I think we're reasonably going to expect out of this season. You, I think usually you've got a sort of rough idea of of how your season is is likely to pan out after about six or six or eight games. I think. Yeah, I think so. I don't... <sighs> I think maybe six or eight games with an existing coach. Maybe it's going to need a bit more with a new coach. I'm just looking at the fixtures. We've also got Palace, which yeah, I'd be interested to see how that goes. Cause that's a winnable game, in my opinion. 
Uh-huh. Um, Manchester City after that, let's just ignore that even exists. <laughs> Fulham, winnable, Chelsea, who knows what they're going to look like this season, winnable, yeah. Brentford, winnable. So, yeah, I think by the time we start, by the time we get out of London, we'll... Uh, Ipswich, Tottenham, Man United. Yeah, by the time November the first rolls around, I think we'll have a very good idea of how the season's panning out and whether we need to be concerned or if we're in for a good season. Do you think that the uh, the final score was a fair reflection of how the match panned out, in your opinion? I guess so. I guess so. I think one one would have been fair. I think two one Villa's probably. F- fair and I think 2-2 two, two probably would have been fair. I don't I don't think it would have been reflective of the game if we'd won. Um, I don't think it would have been a travesty if we'd got a point out of that. Having said that, we was very lucky with the penalty, so maybe maybe that's uh, maybe we would have been lucky to get out of the draw, but I, I think it was a pretty even game. Do you think there'll be any carryover? Do you think there'll be any sort of hangover from this result into that game against Palace? Or do you think that it'll just be, OK, we'll we'll do a, a sort of debrief Monday morning when they all ruck up to, to Rush Green. We'll, we'll analyse the video and, and we'll just sort of like draw a line under it and get on with the game against Palace. Or do you think there'll be some sort of carryover? No, I think there'll be... As you say, sort of draw a line under it and move on. It's all I, I've seen. I've seen this said a couple of times today, and I don't really like it, and I don't really want to say it because it's very Arsenal. But it fits for this term, this current position. But a bit of trust the process, trust the manager, trust trust his ways. Just it wasn't a bad game today. Keep going, and we'll we'll keep playing like that. We'll get results. I think. There may be a hangover in terms of I would expect to see Sujet come out. I guess most likely replacement is James Will Prowse. Um, not sure how that will work out, but we'll see. I, I suspect that will probably happen. Aaron Wam Saka, I think, comes in if he's fit. Well, we'll, know, well, I guess we won't know if he's fit or not, but we might get some uh, leaks in the week about whether that's going to happen. I actually don't think they'll change the centre-backs for now. I think he'll stick the same. And I think he'll probably stick with Antonio as well. So I think there might be a couple of losers to come out of this one in terms of Suchek and Sufal. But in terms of the result and the way we're playing now, I think it'll be a analyse what went wrong, move on, new game against Crystal Palace. What should be with that looking stupid in seven days' time. A more winnable game. Um, yeah, trust the process, as the Arsenal fans say. Any final thoughts before we knock it on the head? Yeah, just I think it's it's not a bad start to the season. I appreciate it. That's weird saying it after a loss, but I think there's a lot of... And this is just football fans these days, and maybe it's not even anything football, it's just people these days, but there's a lot of overreaction um, on the cesspit that is social media. I think give give the new give the new guy time, see how things are looking in 10 games time, come January. We don't need to start, because I've already seen it start coming up about, well, uh, I think one might have been a troll, but we should should have stuck with Moyes. And is this all? Is this what we uh, everyone wanted? Who wanted Moyes out? And I was like, I, I, I just don't want it to become basically J Lo in, J Lo out straight away yeah. again, um, as we had for the last god knows how many years. But yeah, I think just relax, see it, see how it goes, give it some time, and. Uh, Hopefully we'll start to see some some more goals and some less defensive errors. Fair. Charlie, 
<laughs> I'd like to say thank you for your time on the match review of the Palace oh, sure. Palace game. I'm getting the <laughs> games puzzled up. The Villa game. I'll edit this bit out. They'll never know that I made that slip up. Um, guys, please don't forget to like, comment on and share this stream to your socials. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And hit the bell icon for alerts of new content. All these actions are free. Take a couple of seconds. They help grow the channel from where they are now to hopefully where it will get to in the future. Thanks very much indeed for your support. We're going to disappear now. All we can say is, come on, you Irons. We'll see you next time. And please don't forget to continue support for the Irons Supporting Food Banks charity. We will see you next time. Irons Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in New and Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on, you Irons.